As a parent myself, I know very well from personal experience the amount of stress and anxiety it creates when you have a child who may be disabled or ill, is longing to sit up, stand up, walk, but physically can't. And when my own mother became too frail to be able to stand or walk easily on her own, once again I was longing for some sort of walking aid which allowed her to remain mobile and independent. And that's how I know from my personal experience what a wonderful idea it is to have the needs of a patient and the actual furniture or equipment to match perfectly. And that's what demand creates because they manufacture and design equipment specifically for individual patients' needs. Simple idea, but brilliant. Hi, my name is Leah. I love playing the trumpet. Leah faced difficulty because she has a disability which has disabled one side of her body. Leah's mother Bianca suggested that Leah could learn the trumpet as it's an instrument that can be played with one hand. Demand's craftsmen have the ability to engineer equipment from scratch. However, in some cases, a piece of equipment that's readily available can be modified. So Demand modified a monopod camera stand. Before I had the trumpet stand, it was really hard to play because I have a disability called hemiplegia. That means that one side of the body doesn't work as well as the other side of the body. So that meant that I, uh, this trumpet stand really helps me. Sometimes it got really tiring and then I had to have breaks. My trumpet stand really helped me. My knees and hurt and I could um, play for a longer period of time and the song came up perfectly. Now can I introduce you to Tanzila. Tanzila, despite being a lively and enthusiastic pupil, has a hereditary condition characterized by muscular weakness and poor control of movement. And that severely restricts her from participating in educational activities at her special school. So Demand designed and made an articulating arm. The arm attaches to a custom-made mount on her wheelchair which balances the weight of her arm, allowing her to reach and handle objects more easily, freely, and giving her independence. It would uh, support it at the center of gravity of the arm. Think of it in terms of a human arm. It articulates in the same way, and that would be like a shoulder, and that would be like an elbow. And the child's own arm would be attached to this cuff here and strapped in place. Tanzila, which colour do you want? Yellow or red? Yes, all right, good. Tanzila's occupational therapist had the foresight to see that given the support, she would be able to gain control over her arm movement and gain some independence. However, her therapist couldn't possibly have foreseen that she'd subsequently be able to gain control over her fingers. Students like Tanzila, because of their physical disabilities, have to have a lot of things done for them and to them. And Tanzila's special arm means that she can create artwork for herself, she can access musical instruments, and what she does is her choice and her own activities. The mom was approached by carers at Birchwood Care Home in Chesham to develop a solution that would make it easier for their wheelchair-bound residents to paint during art classes. There are times when you're working with canvases and paint and paper and brushes and everything's fine on a, a single plane and then all of a sudden anybody, whether they're able-bodied or not, needs something more than that. And what we found more recently with our artists, because of the way that they want to, and, and to explore their own passions, 
we've been stretching ourselves and them to reach bigger canvases and all together make more of what they can do. Obviously you have a great passion for painting. It's shown in your, your work up there, which is just incredible. You can clearly see that's the Last Supper. So do you have um, sort of certain topics which you find really inspiring? Landscape, and yeah, B, A, N, Van Gogh, by any chance? It's entirely transformed our painting class. I think everybody's become very excited about what they're doing because it's, it's so much easier. And I remember it was one pivotal moment when we were painting um, Elaine's rainbow painting, which is just up on the wall there, which was actually uh, where Elaine was saying, are oh, your arms getting tired? And do you want to stop now? Because I've been holding her canvas for about 20 minutes in various different places. And by having a canvas which is being supported so beautifully by this wonderful easel, she's entirely free to, to paint for as long as she wants. And so immediately then, the relationship we have in, within the class isn't so much supporter and supported. It's actually entirely about being independent and, and actually completely in your own zone. Hi, the two art classes. What, what, what do you do in the art classes? Ah. Art. <laughs> You've just seen Tina uh, using the first easel and this is an example of the second easel which we're making for Mark. Um, we've learned a lot from the first one and we are constantly seeking to improve all our designs and uh, th this is a good example of it. Um, there are certain features on it that don't feature on the original uh, and they are improvements of course. And um, our apprentice George is busy making these parts. It's hard when you make a great demand, excuse the expression, of, on somebody to come up with something so clever. And Paul and, and Lynette and Demand have managed to do just that, just to break it and bring it back to being very grounded. It's not going anywhere fast but it's extremely easy to get close to the chairs and, and it works really well in lots of different guises. So we've, we've had all our ambitions realised, which is, which is fantastic. I just enjoy painting. Now let's meet Orla. Orla has autism, epilepsy and global development delay, which results in her having severe learning and mobility disabilities. My uh, daughter Orla is uh, 11 years old and when she was growing up between you know, three at the age of three and four and she was starting to be more um, curious about the, the world around her, some of the dangers of having an autistic child in the house became apparent. She uh, turns the, uh, the knobs on the cooker without knowing or at least telling anybody. And one time this happened and we didn't notice and the whole thing caught fire. We had to have the fire brigade in and it was um, you know, nearly a disaster. The occupational therapist who was looking after Orla's needs at the time recommended us to demand and uh, they came out to see the house and we talked to some of the, about some of the problems that we were having uh, and they came back with some uh, dramatic solutions, some of them simple, some of them rather more complex. The most obvious one is the, the gates, the see-through gates. This gate stops our sister from getting into the kitchen so she can't burn herself or cut herself with knives. She likes to play with things but sometimes doesn't realise how dangerous they are. And so she, Orla can't do this, but she, to get in you have to squeeze that and you have to push it like that. Uh, but it enables her to see into the kitchen because autistic children are often sensitive to being, being isolated and being ignored. It can make them very angry. So these gates have made the whole cooking process a lot easier. Uh, and it means that we don't necessarily have to have two, par two parents uh, on, on patrol at the same time. Now the other thing they've produced is they, this plate that um, sticks to a, 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 a guardy thing that goes on the table. Uh, this was revolutionary because one of the problems that we were having is that Orla couldn't feed herself. But this plate sticks to the, uh, the table um, and enables her to enable her to learn, apart from anything else, the mechanics of feeding herself. 
obviously a little bit messy at first, but at least the plate stayed on the table. So when she gets cross, she uh, isn't able to throw the plate, so that reduces the number of injuries as well. And because it's very mobile, we're able to take it uh, to restaurants. Previously, the first five years of being a parent, we, we just weren't out of, couldn't go out of the house. This small uh, development would enable us to, uh, to be a family that was free, just like other families, and not be imprisoned. Of course, there are thousands like Leia, Tanzila, Orla and Mark who need the special skill, resource, creative energy that demand can offer. But in order to help them, we need your help. These are tough times for so many charities these days, so many excellent causes, but particularly for a niche charity like Demand, helping people all over the UK, but often whose work goes unnoticed. So I'm asking you to notice. If you can give anything to help support Demand's work, it will be so appreciated. If you would like to give to Demand, you can donate online by visiting their website, www.demand.org.uk or scan the QR code 